Welcome to a video entitled DHCP Server Configuration. And in this short video, I just want to step you through the process of some of the things that you'll do to configure your DHCP server. Now to start off, we added the DHCP role to the server. Now you can see it's already here. I didn't want you to have to watch this thing click and hum. So the first thing I did is I came in, I added roles and features to this server. I went in, I did role based, chose my server, and then I just chose DHCP server. Now you can see that's already installed here. So I'll just cancel. Now once it installed and it said it completely configured, I had a little one up here by my notifications. And anytime you click on that, you will see what needs to be taken care of. And it said that I needed to complete the configuration on my DHCP server. And I clicked on the link and it set my security permissions up the way they needed to be. Now, if I'll go into my local server, I want to show you a couple of things. If I'll go to the local server over here on the left, and th this is my server that I'm setting at locally, and then go to tools over here, I can come down to DHCP and this will open the DHCP management tool. And I'm going to make that full screen so that we can see it. And I will also spread this little guy out so that we can see all this information. Now you'll notice it's showing me my DHCP server and I can expand that and I can see IP version 4 and IP version 6. I'll concentrate on 4 right now. Notice there's a scope already here. And if I expand that, I can see uh, my address pool. Notice it starts at 118, 16, 23, 60 and it ends at 2380. Now, I don't have any uh, leases out there right now. I don't have any reservations, any of that stuff. I do want to show you a couple of things though. On this scope, if I right click it, I can deactivate that scope. That basically means turn it off. And after it's been deactivated, I can right click and activate it. So that's the on off switch for these scopes. Now to create a new scope, I just right click on the IP version 4 right there. And notice I can create a new scope, a super scope, a multicast scope. I can configure failover. I can force replication of my failover scopes. We've talked about that stuff in separate videos. I can define my user classes. Anyway, this stuff we've covered previously, this is how you would implement it. Now for a new scope, let's step through this real quickly. Notice by choosing new scope, it kicks off the new scope wizard. And now I'm just going to give it a name. VTC example, hit enter. And we're going to choose now the range of addresses we want to hand out to our clients. So we'll choose 143, 100, 15.5. That's our starting address. Our ending address is 143, 115.75. So we have 70 addresses. Now notice the length right here. This is the length of my network ID. Notice it already built the subnet mask for me because it sees that 143 is a class B address. Notice if I basically subnet here, it'll start to build these for me. Or if this was a class C address, you'll notice that I can take it all the way out. Let me go back to here and use 24 bits. 8 here, 8 here is 16, 8 more is 24. Okay, so we'll take it back to what it decided because I'm a straight up class B. So we'll take that. And then I can add exclusions. And if I say, you know what, there's some in here I don't want you to use. I can put those in here and I'll skip that for now. The least duration by default is eight days if I want to shorten that. And keep in mind, why would I want to shorten this? Well, if I have a lot of mobile clients who connect and they have that IP address for maybe an hour or two and then they disconnect, I can drop this down considerably so that I'm saving IP addresses. I can use more IP addresses and share the same IP address out to multiple connecting mobile clients. Or if I have enough IP addresses to go around, it's not a problem. I can just leave it on eight days. Then I can configure options. And notice I can tell it that I want to configure these options now. And so I can choose uh, an IP address for a router. And let me go back because I'm running my mouth and I can't remember. 143, 115. There we go. And so 143, 100.15.1 would be a good router address. We'll take that. And then it's going to ask me about 
my DNS server. Do you want to give that out? Well, yeah, I'll take that one. Click next. No win server. I'll just click next there. And do I want to activate the scope? Yes, I'll hit next and I'll finish. And there is my VTC example scope. And notice I can expand it. I can right click and see that it's activated. I can deactivate it if I would like. And while I'm here, let me show you one other thing that could come up on the exam you need to be familiar with. And that is if I right click on the server level, I can unauthorize the server in Active Directory. Now by authorizing it, I've told it that it's okay. It can be a part of Active Directory. I've told it that it can participate in dynamic DNS. So that's the way to authorize or deauthorize an Active Directory. Notice everything else here, address pool, address leases, reservations, scope options. Notice I'm passing out router information, DNS server and DNS domain name. And I can go in here and configure options and add even more of those. Notice I can do name servers, time server, whatever I would like. So that's a real quick look at how you're going to manage and configure your DHCP server.